Crested geckos are an absolutely amazing species of gecko that I find personally make the best pet for the people just starting out and getting reptiles. When it comes to caring for a crested gecko, I find it to be pretty easy, straightforward, and simple. However, there are definitely some things you need to know before getting crested gecko. This is exactly what we are going to be talking about today, going over the five main care topics of crested geckos, including enclosure size, heating and lighting, the humidity, the diet, and then lastly, what to fill your enclosure with to make sure that your crested gecko is happy. So stick around while we get into everything you need to know when it comes to caring for crested geckos. Let's get into it. Kicking this video off, let's start with care topic number one, and that is going to be the enclosure size for your gecko. When it comes to the enclosure size for your crested gecko, it is going to be split into three categories, right? And that is going to be dependent on the age slash size of the animal. So those categories, we're going to place them into the baby size, the sub-adult size or juvenile, and then lastly, the adult size, which then would be its forever enclosure. Start out with the baby. Babies are going to be ones where you basically just get it. They start around, let's say, three, between three and 10 grams and around zero to 10 months of age. Enclosure size for this animal, you are going to want something that the animal is going to be able to feel safe and secured into. Personally over here, since we have a lot, we utilize the shoe court bins or the six quart shoe box bins, sorry. This is going to help the animal feel safe. It's going to have a nice little enclosure where it can explore a little bit, but it's going to feel safe because it's a little bit of a smaller setup. With tubs come great humidity standards. They're going to retain humidity a lot better than some of the open screen enclosures availability when we talk about things like aquariums. However, I know not everyone wants to put their gecko in a shoe box. One of the big cons about those shoe box bins is they're ugly and they look cheap because, well, they're ugly and they look cheap. <laughs> that being said, if you are hell-bent on getting something that has some sort of aesthetics, remember this is always just a temporary enclosure. Your gecko is going to fairly easily uh, grow out of this and then we get to the next size, which we'll talk about later. But some good enclosures I would recommend for that little baby sage, again, are going to be something like a five gallon aquarium or something like an eight by eight by 12 front opening enclosure. However, like most things in life, uh, well, I guess actually all things in life, uh, they do not stay a baby forever and your gecko will quickly grow when that gets us into the next topic. That range is going to be somewhere around the 10 to 20 gram range and again about a year until it hits the two year mark is really where I put this category in. This one you're going to want to go obviously a little bigger. For this, I like utilizing anything from a 10 to 15 gallon aquarium for the sub or a 12 by 12 by 18 for it for grow out. Some people say, oh, Dakota, the minimum is a 12 by 12 by 18 for an adult. I, I don't believe that. I think that's a little bit of outdated info. I, I think we've learned that these geckos, while you don't see them moving around much during the morning, so of course them being surpuscular, they're gonna move a lot more around at night, which means you're gonna wanna give them some space. So I, I know some people are gonna say 12 by 18, that's fine for an adult, but I think we should go a little bigger in my opinion. Which then leads us to the last category, of course, the adult crested gecko. This is gonna be an animal that is two years up and over the 20 to 25 gram plus, you know, they get up to, you know, 40, 50, maybe you got a big fat 80 gram crested gecko that would be something to see for this size i recommend no lighter than an 18 by 18 by 24 or the 29 gallon equip whatever the equivalent is that for the aquarium um, i absolutely find these to be the minimum size personally i mean your gecko is going to live you know 15 20 years you, you want to keep it in an enclosure that can at least move around a little bit right however of course that is just the minimum size i recommend bigger can always be better when we talk about an adult established animal which is why with some help of my sponsor we can talk about an absolutely amazing size for crested geckos. And that is going to be Zen Habitats. Huge shout out to Zen Habitats for sponsoring today's video. Now, as you guys know, we've been sponsored by this company for quite a few years now. And if you actually just look directly behind me, uh, you can see we own quite a lot of Zen Habitats enclosures. You know, I wouldn't be working with a company this long and I wouldn't own multiple, multiple ones of their enclosures if I didn't think it was a good home for your reptiles. So I always recommend Zen Habitats. Now right here below you can see me, that's the 60 gallon enclosure. That is going to be two foot by two foot by two foot, basically a two by two cube. I find this to be absolutely amazing for pretty much most tropical gecko species. We have most of our toki geckos and then our lychee is gonna be right over there. The one thing I absolutely love about Zen Habitats is going to be the quality that they make with their enclosure. We can take a look about this one right here. I've had this enclosure for quite a long time, at least two, maybe three years. It's been a while I've had this. And when you look at the screen, absolutely no rust. This thing still looks pretty good. There's a little lychee poop on it, but we can scrape that off. 
First is taking a look at some of my Exoterra enclosures. I've had these for around the same time, maybe three to four years, a little bit longer, but just look at those tops of those screens. Absolutely rusted, destroyed. I'm actually gonna have to end up replacing some of them. With Zen Habitats, I've not had to replace anything when I've gotten them. Amazing company, quality enclosures that I know reptiles would love. I would not be putting my own breeders, thousands of dollars worth of animals that I'm breeding in an enclosure that I didn't believe in and didn't think was awesome. If you guys wanna learn some more information about Zen Habitats or possibly get an enclosure for yourself, make sure to peep the link I have right down in my description. Your boy gets a small cutback if you use that link. I very much appreciate it. it. Helps us doing everything that we do over here. And let's move on to carrying requested geckos. Turns out my knees aren't what they used to be. I'm gonna have to crisscross applesauce this bad boy. Moving on, let's get into the second topic at hand, which is going to be number two, the heating and lighting requirements for your crested gecko. When it comes to heating, this is the part that gets extremely easy for the crested geckos, and that's because for the most part, they don't really need them. Now, crested geckos thrive in temperatures from anywhere of 70 to 79 degrees. If your room or house or wherever the animal's being kept is within this uh, heat gradient period or in within that range, then congrats. You've now completed the heating section for this topic. <laughs> Drive in room temperatures, it's absolutely fantastic. When it comes to night temperatures, if you have anything that is above 60 degrees, you don't need to use any supplemental heating in any case. However, if those two fall in with not those categories, so let's say your house is you know 65 during the day and 52 at night, what are you doing to where your house gets that cold at 24 seven? That's absolutely crazy. But then you will need some sort of supplement in heating, whether that be something like a basking bulb, a radiant heat panel, um, heat tape, both of those being plugged into a thermostat, of course, or something like a ceramic heat emitter, uh, anything like that, just to boost those temperatures a little bit up until we get into that range that we said, well, just five seconds ago. This section becomes a little bit controversial, even with me myself, because I, don't practice what I preach. Uh, that's gonna be when we're talking about UVB lighting. Now, UVB for crested geckos isn't necessarily a necessity. They don't need it to survive. Some of my crested geckos I give UVB, some I don't. I don't notice too big of a difference, I'll be honest with you. I'm sure there's some maybe internal benefit happening. There's no hindrance. It's not gonna hurt your crested gecko. As long you're getting the right UVB percentage for that animal, then you're not gonna have any problems. But I'm not sure it's doing Super, super stuff. I, the growth seems to be the same. Everything seems to be pr pretty dang similar. So if you wanna use UVB, I'm sure it maybe helps in some way, but it is a not a necessity. Just make sure you're providing some sort of UVA light. UVA light is visible light. So as you have like me, I have a light on in here so they understand the day and night cycle. Uh, that's pretty much it. Heating and lighting for crested geckos, extremely easy. All right, topic number three. This is gonna be where things get the most complicated. It's not complicated, but it is the most complicated part for crested geckos. And that is going to be number three, the humidity requirements for your cresty. When it comes to humidity requirements for a crested gecko, they like a range of 60 to 80%. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in depth because people seem to get a little bit confused. I say 68%, I don't mean set your humidity to 72% and always have it at 72%. That's not what we want. What we want is a humidity gradient. What I mean by this is I'll give a little bit of an IRL example, right? You're gonna miss an enclosure. That enclosure is gonna spike to that, let's say 80% that we want. Throughout the day, that humidity is slowly gonna evaporate, getting lower and lower until we get around 60% which then you want to miss again. So usually you miss once and during the day and then once during night and then you keep getting that gradient, that up and down. We don't want a straight line for humidity. We want up and down like a roller coaster. Let your humidity have a good time. Don't let it be a boring ride for it. Important for two reasons. That's going to be making sure that your humidity stays up inside your enclosure and then the gecko will actually drink the little water driplets that end up on the fall, on the walls, on the little fake plants, anything that you have in there. The gecko's gonna lap that up. Um, I never thought I'd have to say this, but I'm here because an incident took place. Um, you have to give your gecko water. It needs humidity and it needs water. There was a person that didn't do that. So give bonus tip number one for caring for crested geckos. 
give them water. Fun information's out of the way, and we're almost done with this care guide, but we still have just a couple more. This is gonna bring us to number four, the diet of the Crested Gecko. Again, the diet of the Crested Gecko, very easy. We have made this. I can't I can't imagine another animal that is easier to feed than the Crested Gecko. And that's the fact is they have a pre-made food for them, specifically called Crested Gecko food. It's a dehydrated formula. You pretty much take it, you pour the little powder in, you mix it with water until you get like a ketchupy consistency see you put it in the gecko laps it up and then you're done for the day that's literally it, it, it can't get any more easier than that this is why i always say crystal geckos are the best pet for the beginners the first time keepers another little controversial topic as we learn more and more about these guys and research and everything expands further and further i am one of the firm believers that crested geckos and more most new cow geckos won't be able to survive or thrive with just the crested gecko diet and they should be supplemented with feeder insects as well those insects come in a number of variety of different things crickets roaches your worms anything like that but just, just give them a little something. It's absolutely awesome seeing the animal be able to hunt. It opens up its mental enrichment. It's almost like a completely different animal when you feed them bugs versus just a crested gecko food. It grow faster. It's going to be a healthier animal. All in all, it, it's the best thing you can do for your animal, which is why I recommend a combination of utilizing that crested gecko food, which will have all the vitamins and minerals at once. And then, of course, some calcium dusted insects as well for some extra protein, that mental enrichment, everything we just stated before. Here we are, boys and girls, the very last care topic for crested gecko geckos. This one is going to be a bit of a fun one. It's when you get your creativity, your creativity to uh, go out a little bit. It's going to be number five, what to fill your enclosure with. You know, what enclosure size, how to heat it, what to give it for food, how to do it, giving it water. We just need one more thing. That's the fact that we just have an empty enclosure. What do we put in the enclosure? What does the gecko want to be able to be a happy, thriving animal for the lifetime that it stays with you? It's gonna be pretty easy. Now, these geckos are arboreal and they come from a tropical place. So you're gonna want to include pretty much what you would think of when you think jungle. It's gonna be a bunch of climbing opportunities, both vertical and horizontal. Some plants, whether you use fake artificial plants or real plants. Or if you use real plants by going to dakotablueexotics.com and getting some from me, the best plant and bioactive supplier there is, it, the choice is really up to you. Utilizing branches and then cork bark and cork flats. I love them because they don't mold. They're very resistant and hardy and they stand the test of time. Some woods I've noticed after a couple of years, they kind of break down. They get a little bad, a little gross. Uh, not cork bark. Cork bark is just the bark that keeps on giving. And by that, I mean, it's just gonna last you a very long time. <laughs> I probably still have over here like 10 year old cork bark that I just move around, I'll clean it, scrub it, and then put it in another enclosure. Still go and go to this day. Absolutely amazing product. I don't know, pretty much just emulate with the B-roll that you see. This, this is what you want for a crested gecko. This, not what you want for a crested gecko, but this, this is what you want. About wraps it up. Like I said, crested gecko is very easy animal to care for. Pretty easy, give it water. <laughs> I gotta stop with that. A very simple animal, but as long as you know these care requirements and these care topics, then you're gonna have no problem caring for the animal for the life that it's going to live. If that wasn't enough Crested Gecko content for you, we actually have a playlist right here with over 40 or 50 videos, or you can check out this video right here when it comes to building a bioactive enclosure for your Crested Gecko. As always, thank you guys so much for taking the time in your day to follow us over here at Dakota Blue Exotics. I will see you guys next time, but until then, goodbye.